Hello, it's Sarah, and I think I'm going to do a tutorial for you guys um, on these little paint brushes. I painted these years ago, Christmas 04, 10 years ago, and I think it was a project that I did at um, my monthly painting groups. Um, we used to meet in Ocean City at the Senior Center and paint um, once a month. Uh, the Shore Pines decorative artists. Anyway, these are also some little Santas. These are um, just pieces of wood. So I've painted lots of Santas over the years, but this one is just such a cute, and this one, I don't even know why this is kind of turned colors, but it's like gotten old, like, and the, it might be the, um, this, this stuff is called, um, Snow Tech, I don't know, but uh, I painted one today and I just love it. I tried something new, I changed it up a little bit because these are paint brushes that you can get. They're at AC Moore and Michaels. This is the two inch brush, and this is the one actually, I don't think it's one inch, I think it's it's one and a half. I figured I'd try it on a bit bigger one, and I'm really glad I did. So, this is the two inch brush, and I actually got these at AC Moore. And they're just, they're about a dollar, I think. Um, so let me show you what I did today. It's super cute. Um, and the way I'm going to do it is you don't need a pattern or anything. You can just, this one, I love how I added a button to it. So I'm bringing in what I've learned and um, my new... Uh, love of, I'm trying to get that glare out of the shot. <laughs> um, I think I could probably move this because I don't like that glare. I used um, this sparkle varnish. If you guys haven't seen this, it's a folk art product and it's called sparkle varnish and basically it's just a gold, uh, I'm sorry, a clear varnish with glitter in it and it's water based and I love it it's for like this type of a thing. See how I put it on this too. I don't know if you can see the spark. See the hat? When you look at the uh, the shine there, it has glitter all over it. So I love to do that on my Christmassy items. Um, so I put that on here. I used, actually I used clear on his face and I did something new. This is what I was going to tell you guys about. If you notice, um, his face looks smoother than this one because this one I painted right on the raw metal. This one I painted on canvas. So all I did was take um, the sticky back canvas and put a piece, you can see it there, the edges, and I stuck it to there. Now I don't know how this is gonna hold up, but I liked it because I wanted to see if I could see, this one has the one and a half is sticking out right there and these ridges and bumps. And I mean, it looks fine. It gives it that rustic look. So I mean, you don't have to do it, but I want to see how you can see it really well there. It tells millimeters and everything. I don't know what it says, something one and a half inch and then there's all the ridges, but I covered up most of that on this one. So I was really happy with that. I took a piece of my scrap sticky back canvas and cut it. I think it's one inch going this way by like an inch and three quarters, I think. Something like that. And then I just glued, um, I'm sorry, stuck it because it's adhesive backed. And then I gessoed all over everything. So here's what it looks like. I um, So you can see the sticky back canvas on there. Maybe I'll move this. Oh, then now there's still, no matter where I go, there's a glare. Um, and then I gessoed on top of that. So I gessoed right on top of the metal, right on top of the canvas and on the brush and a little bit on the bristles too because you're gonna end up putting um, gray. And you know what's funny? I used my heating tool to, to dry it between steps and it curled the uh, bristles a little bit, which was kind of cool. Um, so one of those happy accidents, it was kind of neat, but I mean, you don't want to melt it too much. Uh, <laughs> but um, so that's the first step. You just want to gesso it or prime it in some way, um, maybe a, just a sealer, a wood-based sealer, but you need to, I would just put at least some gesso on your metal. 
Um, and if you have sticky back canvas, or maybe you even want to Mod Podge, I don't know because I haven't tried it because I'm painting on top of this and I knew the canvas would take the paint really well. So that's why I did it that way. And then you just want to sand it gently, um, the wood, because the gesso does leave a little bit of um, like a tooth to it. So that's the first step you want to do. So prep your piece. And like I said, if you happen to have this sticky back canvas, I just really like how his face turned out much smoother. I mean, you're still going to have the ridges down here, of course. I mean, unless you go up and fit everything in there. But um, then the next step would be to base coat um, your top part, the handle of the brush, with red. And I used, um, this is a, just a primary red. It's called from Americana. Um, and it covered really nice. Two coats of this, two thin coats and it covered. I'll go ahead and do some of it with you. Um, and then I did the face part, so pick a side that you want to be your face, and that I used flesh tone, but you can use any skin tone that you like or prefer. There's lots of them out there. This is called medium flesh, and that's what I do a little bit of my shading with. Um, there's dark flesh. There's a lot of different flesh colors out there. Um, so I did that, just pretty much the, the little rectangle for his face. But then you want to do the rest gray, because that's the undercoating for the hair, the mustache. Um, or, or even going to do eyebrows with gray, too. But just kind of put a little bit on the bristles, too, um, and get that all done in gray for your undercoating. You're going to put snow tech along here for your... Um, for the hat, so you're going to have that there, and I just put the, the pom-pom all the way around there, and then I just decorated the top with a few leaves and some gold paint. Um, I used blue for his eyes this time. You don't have to use blue. I just happen to love blue-eyed men. My husband has blue eyes. Uh, you can put green, brown, whatever color eyes you want your Santa to have, and um, you need a little, you know, all I did was mix some red in with the flesh tone to make this color, believe it or not. So you don't need any pinks. Um, oh, I did end up using Napa Red, which is just a darker red for that little triangle where his mouth is. Just for the inside of his mouth. And then I did the lip in the same color as the cheeks and the nose. Alright, so I'll have all this stuff in the description box. Um... So this is pretty much just uh, getting you ready for what you're going to need. Now, how I did the face was I just kind of drew out some faces. I played with different kinds of eyes. I was thinking about the Peachy Keen stamps a little bit. And if you have a stamp, stamp it onto um, tracing paper. And then you can actually trace it onto here with graphite paper if you're... Um, if you don't want to freehand it, but I'm going to show you how you can freehand it, so it, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, if you can kind of just wing it, you know, I mean, you, it doesn't have to look like mine. You can do a real, this one, um, actually, look at these eyes. Can you see that? You can just do little black triangles and put a little highlight there, and he'll look super cute. Um, and I actually pounced in these eyebrows. I like that idea. These I kind of just um, stroked in. He's a lot more manicured. He's a very pretty Santa. <laughs> but um, so that's basically what we're going to do. Um, so I'll come back and we'll start um, painting in a minute. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back. And I've gone ahead and I've um, prepped this piece um, to show you how I do the face. But all I did was I painted um, the front, this little square piece here with flesh tone, and the rest gray for the undercoating um, of the hair. And then you're just going to do a little extra gray um, kind of around the face. Just pull a few wisps down for when you put his bangs in. I like to put little bangs and a little bit of hair coming in from the sides. And then his mustache kind of goes right around here. Just make an arch 
like that and that'll be his mustache and then you'll fill it in with white anyway it'll look like hair all right so that just gives you um, a guideline for where you're going to put your hair and um, facial features all right he's a little crooked so I'm trying to do this with the tripod there all right that looks pretty good um, I'm going to do a little bit of shading and I do that using actually I don't have my I'm going to grab this real quick because I, I actually painted my other snowman using my um, Tim Holtz craft mat I don't know if this is Tim Holtz but I know it had that um, glare so I took it away but I was using this to shade with so I'm going to show you how I do that I'm going to use the darker flesh. It's actually called medium flesh because this is just a shade um, darker than the base coat that I did on there. And I'm going to um, corner load my brush, get my brush wet first, and blot, and then corner load. And I just have that little corner load of paint and go to my palette and blend it in and actually you know what I'm gonna go away and come back and get um, palette paper okay so I went over and I grabbed my disposable palette and they, they come in lots of brands this happens to be by Canson um, and it's called a paper palette and what it is basically is like a wax paper type of paper you can see the, the shine on that it's flat matte on one side and it's shiny on the other so um, I usually have this my paper towels right with it um, and my brushes all usually end up in the water <laughs> but I'm gonna just keep it to the uh, I'll keep it here actually for now so you can kind of see everything but what I'm doing then I take my and I usually have my paint so everything's kind of here and you go into your water, blot, corner load your brush, grab a little bit of that flesh color and then you go to your palette and you kind of blend it into the brush. And this isn't a real intricate piece, um, it's a kind of a cutesy piece so we don't need to be perfect but I'm going to pull some of that color along his uh, forehead and get it up in the gray that's okay because you're going to pull white over it so you can see how that just added a little shadow there um, we're going to add the cheeks by just taking a little bit of that red and mixing it into this we're going to brush mix it and i'll show you how to do that but i'm going to go um, down the sides too with that color but i'm just going to give that a second to dry just a little bit and go kind of pull it up the side but it, you can take off what you put down if you um while it's wet so i'm being a little hasty because i'm doing this on camera but you can kind of see that there's a shadow now around that hairline um, what can I do while I'm waiting for that to dry? Um, you know what? I'm going to grab this Napa Red and I'm going to make the little triangle area for his mouth. And I just grabbed a round brush. I'm just going to pop a little of that color here. And this will get covered with the white too, but this is just to give the idea where that goes so we know. It's kind of big. He's got a bigger mouth than my other Santa. And I just was cleaning my brush off. Um, so now we're going to go into the water, blot. I'm going to pick up some of that um, shading color that I had, put it down, get a little bit of the red 
and put it right down there and I'm brush mixing it. So I'm mixing it in to that, um, kind of making a little bit of a pinkish flesh color. Now I have a lot on my brush, so I'm going to rinse my brush, blot, and just load it into this color. I like this color. So now I'm going to hold my piece straight so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to make them a nose, and I like to make it nice and round. It's kind of big. Give them a big nose. And then I'm going to make these little cheeks that pop up right over his mustache. One's bigger than the other. So while it's still wet, I can push it up a little bit more. This is called a side load because I've, um, or a float because I've only loaded one side of the brush with paint. And I really don't like the angle of this. There we go. I fixed it. I like it better. And I'm going to grab my my mop brush, which I do not need at all. It looks fine. I'm going to see who's texting me. It's my hubby. Um, all right, so now I'm going to take, I'm going to get my liner again, or my round, and kind of figure out where I want to put some eyebrows. So go back into my gray. Now that I have his cheeks on and his mouth and nose, I can kind of figure out, and I like to give them these like manicured bushy eyebrows. So I go like this. Now listen, you can put whatever kind of eyebrows you want. Kind of thick, thin, small, big. But that's the shape I have so far. And then his eyes are going to go somewhere in there. So. I'm going to fill in a little bit more of this burgundy color. And that's just simply going to be um, the inside of his mouth. I'm going to do, I'm going to get the white. And this is just plain straight white. Shake your paint down, guys. Make sure it's nice and shook up and this is like I'd say this is a number one round it's not a script liner it doesn't say I'm gonna get some white I want to show you when I load my brush to do this I make a slicker wetter puddle next to the puddle I don't just go right to the paint and right to the piece I always load my brush making sure that when I go to my piece I will have I think it's raining I was just outside. It was beautiful out. Um, so I'm going to start and I'm going to make his eyes and I'm just going to make a circle in the center and I'm going to get wider. I'm going to put little triangles on the end. But this is kind of how I keep them the same size. Sort of circles are hard to do. So that looks pretty even so far. Then I'm going to take them I'm going to make little triangles over here and over here. And I actually like to make them touch the cheek. So those are nice big eyes. I don't like to talk when I paint, I guess. I'm a little too focused, so let's see if those are even. I think this one's a little. And you can always go back if they're lopsided or anything and put your flesh color in there to fix it. So I think that looks pretty good. It's proportionate. And I wanted to make his cheeks a little brighter this time and his nose because if you look at this one 
they were really light, which I like that, but um, they popped better. I think I actually brightened them up. All right, so I'm going to give that a second to dry. Um, let's grab the white while we have the white out. And I'm going to just take that kind of like a detail brush and get the paint a little wetter. So I got, I d went to my water and now I'm just bringing that drop of water into this paint and making it like a little inky. Be right back. Okay. And I'm going to load my brush and I'm going to pull in some hair. Pull some bangs, little wispy bangs. And you don't want to cover up all your gray. Let some of that gray shine through. This was Santa in his younger years when he was a pretty boy. <laughs> and pull some wisps from the side. These aren't looking too wispy, but it's the, the shape of the brush makes it hard. But you know, you're going to have your, um, oops, the snow tech will be up here. So it, I'll cover that. And... I can always add more gray to make it, to get, give it shape. I might as well pull a few lines on his brows too. That looks pretty good. Turn your piece to make it easier for you to get the angle that you need. Give him some bushy eyebrows. It's cold in the North Pole. Um, all right, so he's starting to come together. Might as well pull some lines for the mustache. And I like to go kind of like up a little bit there, kind of poking like hairy hairs. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Like, just don't fill it in, you know. Try to make it like it's little short hairs is what I'm trying to say. Um... Kind of like sticking up a little. That's what I do anyway. My dad always had a mustache. My kids have beards and mustaches. It's so funny. Um, but, uh, you know, they can look scraggly. So pull it kind of down into the lip there. You know how it goes on the lip. And we're going to shade around this to make it um, more defined. So don't worry, just get some color on there. Excuse me. Yeah, it was a beautiful day out today. Like 73 degrees. I went out and did some errands and walked a dog. Put a little second coat on those eyes to get that really solid color. And then what I like to do for the lip is I'll take this brush and I'll make a brush mix again with the flesh color and a little bit of red like we did for the cheeks. So this flesh color, I just put some over there, grab a little red and just make a brush mix right here. And then I'll just put a little lip on them. And let's see, I want to look at my other lips because I really liked how I did that. Kind of like, it's like a, a little heart shape. I like that. It looks cute. And that is a little bright. I'm going to go back into my flesh color and tone it down a little, make it a little more flesh color. And I'm going to pull whiskers over his lip too a little I think um but that looks pretty good it's a little more pink than my other one was um and I can always fill it I mean I think I'm gonna fill in that burgundy give it a little rounder shape um, 
I want to bring the mustache down a little more too, like this. Make it a little bushier. I like that better. But now I have flesh color. I like that better. That looks better. A fuller mustache. All right. So. And then obviously you would go around the whole thing. I'm going to take um, just a rough looking brush. This is like a rough brush that I use for any number of things. For, brick, for base coating, for varnishing, for gesso, for so many things. And I just go like this. Basically, you just, oops. Actually, my um, the snow tech will go there, so that's okay. But you want some gray to shine through. You don't want to cover all the gray. And pull it down on the bristles. And that just represents his hair. I mean, that's the back. And then the side. Cover that. And then the side. With a little gray showing through. This is hard around the camera. Sorry. And then the front, you just pull white. My white is running out, but I'll get it down. I like to leave the gray. Leave the gray. I'm going to shade underneath the mustache to with the gray. So you can get it wet, white. But he's starting to come together. He's looking Santa-y. Um, let me think. I think we could probably put the eyes on. And I'm going to do blue again. I told you, I love a blue-eyed man. Um, this is called Copen Blue, and it's such a pretty color. It's a bright, bright blue. And I'm using that detail brush again. I'm just going to get some paint. Make a little slicker wetter puddle next to the original puddle. That's actually kind of wet. So I just blotted my brush to get some water off it. My voice is a little froggy today. Alright, so. Oops, sorry guys. I'm going to sit right in front of my piece because I want to make this straight and I put the circle a little towards the left on the right eye and a little toward the right on the left eye I don't know if that made sense but I'm just gonna fill the area so you start in the middle go all the way up to the top of the white and all the way down to the bottom I like that shape. That looks good. It's kind of like a square, like a rounded square, if that makes sense. It's not exactly a circle. You just want it to go to the top and to the bottom. This one seems bigger than that one. No, it's all right. I can fill it in. And you know what? My original one, I made his eyelid with black. And I love it. It pops. But there's no black on the piece anywhere else. So I think I'm going to just get a chocolate brown. See, that's way too big. Circles will grow on you. So you got to be careful. But I'll go away and I'll come back. I'm going to fix that. And I'm going to go get... Um, some brown. Okay, I'm back. I fixed the blue, but I'm going to add a little more white to, um, I got blue in the white, so I want to just, um, clean that up right here. And honestly, you guys, oopsie, I really... I made that much smaller, but I'll go back over it. I just really wanted to get this. The tools make the difference. You can't use those, a brush that the bristles are going every which way. You know, your paint has to be the right consistency to get it to flow off the brush. Um, 
and you know it can get really frustrating if you're not using the correct tools and you're not you know and your paint isn't the right consistency and you haven't shaken the bottle and gotten the pigment correct so those little things um, help a ton and with the quality of your piece you're going to be much happier if you just take the minute or the and spend the, a little bit extra to get the quality brushes they're not that much more um, you can collect them over time um, using a coupon even if you want um, but it makes the difference so um, don't di get discouraged and uh, practice makes perfect so see I like to make these little hairs kind of come up from his nose too it just gives a little character and down into his mouth kind of um, so I'm gonna fix that blue since I took my white and went right into it because I had it the right size but now it's there we go Q-tips are also, I always, and this is empty, getting empty, but I always had Q-tips at the ready when you're painting because you just need a little spit and you can wipe it away quickly if you um, make a mistake too. But you can always paint over it. So now what we're going to do is add his pupils. And I am going to use black for that. Um, and I like to put, I'm going to show you on the one I did. They're kind of towards the top, and the blue is on the bottom. There are a lot of different ways you can do it. Painting eyes is an art all to itself. <laughs> um, but for this little handsome fella, I'm just going to put my pupils at the top of the blue. So I'm just going to go to the top and pull down about two-thirds of the way. And again, if you go too far, you can always touch it up with the blue. Like I think I did go a little bit further on this eye. Because, you know, it's, if you make it uneven, it definitely looks weird, you know. All right, and then I am going to use brown, and I'm going to use my really skinny brush. This is, um called a script liner a script and it's just really thin thin brush and I'm gonna get this I used dark burnt umber see it's so old you can't even I always write the names of my paints on the top but this is dark burnt umber and I shook it up real well I'm gonna go into my water bucket and then pull a little slicker wetter puddle. I want this to be like ink. I want it to flow off the brush like ink. When you do your eyeliner, I don't do eyeliner, but <laughs> my mom used to use that, like she would wet it and, and paint that line across her eye. Um, this is what it reminds me of because I'm gonna make give him an eyelid. And so I'm just gonna start in the corners, in the corner toward the nose, and pull it across and it can kind of get a little thicker because then it looks like an eyelid and this might even be a little too dark I might want to add flesh tone to this I'm just playing now guys but I'm gonna put a little flesh tone over here uh, I think the I think the brown would have been good yeah this is kind of I might use this and see what it looks like all right let's see what it looks like I'm just going to go for it, put my brush down, push, and kind of come up like that. So it kind of looks like an eyelid. He's, like, he's a very girly man. I like giving him lashes. That looks so cute. And then when you add the highlights, it's just, it makes it come to life. So I'm going to put my brush in this corner. Kind of push down and pick up at the end and give them a couple little lashes. Let's see how that looks.
pretty good. I kind of like it in the brown. I think it looks good. I don't, I mean, it doesn't bother me that it's not in black, but look how he comes to life. So this one is in black. And it really pops with the black. But the brown looks good too. So it's fun to switch it up. They're looking pretty good, but you know what? He doesn't have any highlights, and that's going to make all the difference too. And all I do for that is with the white and that really little skinny screw, um, script brush, I'm going to get a little bit of white on my brush and put a tiny little dot in this corner of the black and this corner of the black. Look how that just brought him to life. Um, I like to put a little on his cheeks so I'm just gonna go here kinda just skip it along on his cheeks and his nose and his lip. And then um, for his eyes, I put a highlight, so I just took the blue color that we used for his eyes and a little bit of white and make a little lighter blue color and just pull a little tiny line on the opposite. Actually, that's, I didn't add enough white. Can't really see it. On the other side. And it just makes him look a little brighter. So what do you think? Does he look? What else do we need to do? Um, I think I want to... No, you know what? The gray is looking good, but I'll show you what you could do. If you didn't have um, a uh, distinguishable line between your mustache and your beard, you would take a little bit of the gray. Um, and this is on my angle brush. This is, I'm using a 3 8 inch, inch angle brush right now and I'm quarter loading into the gray. And then I'm going to go to my wet, um, it's not a wet palette, it's a dry palette. My paper palette and work it into the brush. And then you would just go kind of under your lip and under your mustache if you needed to um, define that because you didn't have enough gray left when you did your white, but I think it looks fine actually. You could even put it a little along the bottom of your brows and maybe in, add a little gray if it's too bright on your mustache. Because then you could always go back over it with white and make it, make the little hairs pop. Be right back. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is the little leaves that are on the top of the brush. I'm just getting out. This is called Christmas Green, and this is Hauser Light Green. Just two kind of green colors that complement each other. I'm going to grab this um, Filbert brush. This is a number four. Filbert and it's just a flat brush but it has sometimes it's called a cat's tongue I don't know why a cat's tongue but <laughs> it has a curved edge and it's just nice for making leaves so I'm gonna double load this brush so let's see if I can get this in the shot you're gonna hit, put half the paint on that side of the brush flip it around and put half the paint on the other then you go to the palette over here and work the paint into the brush. Going back and forth, flip it over. I'm going to reload it. I'm going to go back into the light, back into the dark. Get this brush nice and juicy so I don't have to go back. All right, and then we're going to make just a few leaves right at the top, just around the, um, I think I put like two up here. One, oops, two, this, this handle doesn't have very much room up top, and maybe like three down here, one, 
two, three. And that's it. They're just little leaves. I'm not going to fuss over them. And then I'm going to put some gold because I love this gold. This is glorious gold. My battery's running out. So I'll be right back. I'm actually going to get my script liner again and put some little branches. I mean, just, I guess they're um, stems more or less, but just give these leaves somewhere to hang. So I'm gonna go, hmm, I made a little swirly thing. Uh, I think here, and a little swirly thing. And then connect them to the, I hope I'm in the shot, I'm in the shadow, but put a little here, here and connect this one and this one and you could put swirlies wherever you want I'm gonna put little um, gold leaves and I'm gonna use what brush should I use I could just use this the filbert again I'm just gonna use the gold and the tip of the brush and just put some little gold leaves just the tip of the brush. That's kind of big, but that's okay. I just love this color. It's super pretty. This brush is kind of big to make little leaves. But look, this is what a Q-tip does. So you take a Q-tip and I spit on it and then I just rub it, kind of twist it as you go. And you can take the paint off while it's still wet. Just don't push too hard. Um, let me see, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna do it again, but I just want it to be, to be smaller. So just don't put as many, don't put as much pressure. What the heck, I don't like that one either. I gotta use a smaller brush. But you know what's happening because this has like glitter in it. It's getting, there's like a shimmer left on the piece where I um, painted it. I'm just using this round. You know, number three rounds are like the best for um, everything. This is a number, it doesn't have a number. Oh yes, it does two. This is a number two, but you can kind of flatten it out and use it as the same as I was doing for um, the flat brush, even though it's a round brush. So I just loaded that with gold and I'm gonna try and make something that looks like a little leaf. It's not, it's not looking good, but I mean, I guess I gotta flatten it out. There we go, look at that perfect little one. All right, and I'll put one over here. And then I also used my script liner to make, just add a little X or connect them, kind of connect it to that little twig. And you could put squiggles or whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna just put a vein in gold too up my leaves. Cause it's such a pretty color. I love it. Some things just make you happy. And that happens to make me happy. Glorious gold. Okay. So guys, this is basically it. Let's have a look at them. I don't know if his eyebrows are as defined because I did just go over them with the gray. The same thing. See how I went under his um mustache with the gray and on the mustache with the gray and um, on the eyebrows with the gray. So I can come back now with my white on, I'm going to use um, my scripty scripty liner. So keep in, trying to keep these lines really, really thin. Get it inky. So I'm making it like nice and inky and I'm going to put there we go, see, little hairs, but they're showing up now, like. Cause I just needed that little undercoating of gray. Oh, he's so pretty, the Santa. And I'm just gonna put a few hairs kinda crisscrossing in the beard, in the mustache, I mean. 
just like and this is all just preference personal preference don't you know just I mean call it done when you're done I'm just I'm just having so much fun actually right now <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of a wider brush and do some more down under here and make this a little whiter Not too white up against the mustache. Good. Now for the Snow Tech, which I would recommend. I love this product. This is a nice brand new juicy one. And I'm gonna use kind of an old scraggly brush that I don't care too much about because I'm gonna just I I tried it with a palette knife and a palette knife didn't do. I I needed to be able to push this where I wanted it to go. So this isn't that scraggly, but it's a little stiff. And I'm just gonna pull out a little bit at a time and kind of place it. Oh gosh, I'm crowd, this tripod is crowding me. Along his the top edge here for a little um, fuzzy cap effect. So I'm gonna make it about at least an eighth of an inch. I mean, geez, a quarter of an eighth, a quarter of an inch thick. Going all the way across this, kind of where the metal starts and just kind of fluff it up over the red there. You want it, I want it to stay fluffy, so I'm trying not to push down too much. And I'm going to add more to kind of fluff it up. And you can push on it and poke it and get it where you want it. I hope I'm in the shot. I'm having fun, you guys. This is such a cute little piece to do. So I hope you like it. My husband has always loved this one. And um, so basically that's what you're gonna do. And then I also put um, a pom-pom right in the center about here. And just floof it up. And actually I'm just gonna leave it on the front this time. I made it go all the way around on my other guy. But I'm just leaving it right here. I'm not going to go all the way around. I don't know why. I'm just changing it up. Make it round and fluffy. Cute. <clears throat> I mean, you really don't have to go all the way around the back. You know, I mean, <clears throat> you're going to want his cute little face to be seen on the tray anyway when you hang him up. I just love it. This stuff is cool. So then um, as a very, very last step, this takes about three hours to dry. Um, that's what the uh, thingy says, and it does. I mean, it starts to really set in about an hour, but like it's still soft, you know? So give it a couple hours. And then varnish. I use um, DecoArt and Americana varnishes. This is a DecoArt gloss varnish. There's matte. I like matte actually, but on my Christmassy stuff, I do use gloss a lot more because it's just you know you want it to sparkle and it's it's for um, it's not a realistic or anything like that, you know. So. Uh, I do use gloss, but for the most part, I would tend to use a matte varnish because sometimes the um, glossy varnishes take away from the details and things. You can't see them the same as with a matte. The matte is a flatter um, visual, is what I'm trying to say. So um, look how cute. And this is water-based, so I'm just gonna put my brush right in the water and there he is. So this is the one I did. Oopsie. And I hope you guys liked it. 
Any questions or comments, let me know. And have a great day. Thanks for watching. Okay, real quick. Um, I just noticed that I did shade. Now, see, this is because I'm playing around. Uh, this is... I went to dinner and everything and looked at the video and it's not hard yet but it's definitely set like it's setting up so just be careful I went around the whole thing on the bottom but I just left the um the pom-pom um, but what I wanted to show you was on here I did shade up against the nose this way like I darkened around the nose and a little bit about like under say his bangs on this one and so you know because his face does look kind of bright I don't know it's just because I'm I've painted for years I notice things that maybe you wouldn't notice but I'm gonna use the medium flesh and just show you what the difference is so I'll show you this is a side load I'm just getting my um, 3 8 inch angle brush and I'm gonna go into that medium flesh and uh, get some on my brush and I'm just gonna go I want to get this on film I'm, a, I'm much higher up this time so I'm gonna come in a little bit Kirby's coming in I'm just gonna go here and here around the nose kind of up the center can't really even see it but I will notice it and up here you know what you don't even notice it I do and then I just wanted to talk about varnish I also had and I mentioned this in the other video the sparkle varnish I love this sparkle varnish for my Christmassy pieces and it has glitter in it it dries clear but it has glitter in it and I'll just show you real quick I'll do I'll be gentle and I'll try to <laughs> varnish um, let's see sorry I'm trying to find a brush that's okay I'm gonna use this one um, but it's so pretty I usually do my Christmassy stuff with this because it's awesome why wouldn't you <laughs> um, but on his face I just used the clear the clear gloss so it wasn't it didn't interfere I think I did use the sparkle on my previous ones but on this one I just didn't because I just think he's so pretty the way he is but when you varnish it's it's good it preserves the piece um, the paint will um, last longer and watch when I go over these leaves it just makes them pop so um, it, you can do a couple coats of varnish just make sure it's um, dry in between coats I won't I'll just do one and I mean actually for, for an ornament it probably would be good to do a couple because it is going to get handled and um, you know it's a Christmas ornament so you're gonna pull it out year after year also always sign your piece and I like to put the year at least put the year because I just put Sarah and the year usually um, because then you know when you painted it and it's fun it's fun to see how you've improved um, and don't be hard on yourself like just you know what be proud of yourself be proud it's not gonna look like mine I'm practically a professional I have painted for years and um, you know you have to get there you're gonna get there I mean I have pieces like let's see these were painted in 04 so 10 years ago and you know I I mean probably painted for I don't know how long I was painting when we moved here it was 90 I don't know maybe I'd been painting about four years at the time but anyway um, I just wanted to share that okay you guys thank you so much I hope you like it have a great one bye